war can lead to humanity's darkest moments, and Unit 731 is a chilling example. While Germany's genocidal actions that targeted specific groups are widely documented, there are lesser discussed stories of atrocity during these times. One of the lesser known tales is that of Unit 731. During the 1930s and throughout the Second Sino-Japanese War until the conclusion of World War II, Unit 731 conducted gruesome experiments on numerous prisoners and villagers in Harbin, located in northeastern China. Manchu Detachment 731, commonly known as Unit 731, operated covertly under the Imperial Japanese Army. This clandestine division was dedicated to surreptitious research and advancement in the fields of biological and chemical warfare. Sadly, their pursuits extended beyond this, encompassing sinister human experimentation and the creation of deadly biological armaments. Japan delved into biological warfare during the 1930s, skirting the 1925 Geneva Convention's bans on such tactics. The Imperial Japanese Army, controlling chunks of China then, set up shop near Harbin's Pingfang district, booting out eight villages to build their facilities. Harbin was picked because there was plenty of test subjects around. Unit 731 mostly used criminals, local poor folks who agreed to take part for some cash, and prisoners from Russia, Korea, China, and Mongolia. Surgeon General Shiro Ishii was the director of Unit 731. Ishii played a pivotal role in both crafting and implementing biological weapons during his service at Unit 731. Ishii went ahead and infected prisoners with actual germs and different types of viruses to see how diseases would spread. To figure out how infections worked, they mixed sick individuals with the healthy prisoners. Moreover, they released rats carrying the bubonic plague into prisoner enclosures as part of their experiments. One of the most chilling accounts that highlights the horrors of Unit 731 involves the brutal practice of vivisection, where live prisoners were dissected, frequently without any form of anesthesia. This was carried out with the intention of understanding the spreading of pathogens within the living test subjects' internal organs. Their goal was to create what they called plague carriers, using humans as carriers to spread diseases among Japan's enemies. Unit 731 deployed the disease carriers over neighboring Chinese villages and towns with the purpose of gauging both the quantity and efficiency of casualties they could potentially inflict. They wanted to figure out how they could cause big outbreaks, and sadly, they could. There is a rough estimate regarding the number of individuals whose lives the unit claimed, and a range between 200,000 to 400,000. Poisonous gas was already being used by the Japanese forces against Chinese soldiers, and Unit 731 was actively experimenting with its potency on prisoners. Test subjects were also transported to a designated testing ground within Anda County. There, these individuals were subjected to weapon bombardments in order to analyze effectiveness. They even used airplanes to spread diseases over villages, just to see how deadly it could get. During that period, reports emerged of plague outbreaks in Ningbo and Changde. Subsequent investigations revealed that these outbreaks were, in fact, a result of experiments carried out by Unit 731, involving the deliberate release of disease carriers into local populations. Even the members of Unit 731 weren't exempt from being subjected to experiments. An employee from Unit 731's 1st Division got infected with the bubonic plague due to the production of plague bacteria. Then, like the rest of them, he met the same fate. In 1942, the unit decided to mess with the water in Zhejiang province by adding cholera and typhoid. But things quickly went haywire. The outbreaks went crazy, and not only did it hit their intended Chinese targets, but it also took down over 1,700 Japanese soldiers in the process. Unit 731 wasn't some bunch of crazy scientists going rogue with terrible experiments. The Japanese government gave them the green light and a wide scope to work across different places, even documenting their findings in detailed reports. Some Japanese scientists even said the unit's experiments were about finding scientific cures and giving the military an edge against biological dangers. Despite committing reprehensible crimes against humanity, the central figures responsible for the scientific and operational aspects of Unit 731 managed to avoid facing any trial or consequences. After Hiroshima and Nagasaki had been destroyed, it was a clear signal that the war had ended and the Allied forces had emerged victorious. Unit 731 employed explosives to demolish its headquarters in China, but the significance of the unit's work, research, and its scientists proved to be too valuable for the USA to disregard. Ishii and his associates were apprehended by United States authorities, similar to Operation Paperclip which saw infamous German war criminals covertly brought to the USA and provided with resources to continue their activities. Scientists from Unit 731 secured their own freedom by trading their extensive and successful biological warfare program data. U.S. General Douglas MacArthur got a hold of classified info about the unit's operations. He then made a deal. He offered Ishii and his crew immunity from prosecution in return for their scientific documents. Shiro Ishii lived a cozy life in Tokyo as he grew older, while his dedicated comrades rose through the ranks and took up important positions. After many years, China established a museum in Harbin to commemorate its countless affected individuals. 
Japan didn't truly acknowledge the horrors until 1988. Yet the unspeakable horrors and the countless stories of the individuals who endured unfathomable suffering have slipped away into the abyss of time. They now linger as fleeting echoes cast as forgotten narratives in the vast expanse of history.